Yeah. Yeah. Good evening, all. So before I start, can anyone please confirm whether my voice is clear, whether the screen is visible or not? Yes. Yes, sir. It's visible yeah. and audible. Yeah. One second. Your voice is not audible right now. Uh, are you talking? No. So in the last session, demo session, there was a session, right? I was speaking about what is Apache Spark, why PySpark, need for PySpark, right? PySpark features, PySpark job market, and real life usage of PySpark with us. So in the last week, we had a demo session, right? Evolution of Apache Spark. Spark was developed by Matai Zaharia in AMP Lab, Berkeley in the year 2009. When was it introduced? In the year 2009. Spark was open sourced in the year 2010, right? Spark was open sourced in the year 2010. And Spark was donated to Apache Software Foundation. It was donated mm -hmm. to Apache Software Foundation in the Aye. year 2012, right? Yes. So defining Spark, right? I define, okay. Yeah, it's getting recorded. Thank you. Yes, it's getting recorded. So defining Spark, I define Spark in five lines. First thing, Spark is an open source. It's given by Apache Software Foundation, right? And uh, it is a cluster computing framework. It is a cluster computing framework with distributed execution the distributed execution right in parallel process style with in-memory computation feature used for large scale data processing so all the features also you are going to see in hadoop except this in-memory computation this in mem because of this in-memory computation you see like very high speed in the case of spark means memory level storage and memory level processing is going to happen within the spark so cluster computed distributed execution parallel processing in memory computing used for large scale data processing in memory computation means data gets loaded into ram and data gets processed within the ram that's why here you need to you need to maintain huge rams right a bigger rams means here big data means uh, involves huge amount of data bigger data sets so here huge data huge rams we need to maintain because uh, here even if you have got uh, for example i have got 10 systems each system with 16 gb rams right what is the total ram capacity i have got 10 systems each system has got 64 GB RAM. 10 systems, each system with 64 GB RAM, right? 40. So what is the total RAM capacity? 640. 640, right? Okay, that's what. Uh, here, data gets loaded into RAM. Data gets processed within the RAM. Here, it data gets divided into partitions. Whatever the data set, right, it is going to be divided into smaller parts, partitions, and the partitions are distributed across multiple RAMs of multiple 
worker nodes worker nodes right and are processed parallelly and are processed parallelly we are going to see very high speed for it okay fine it is a general engine right spark is a general engine for big data analysis processing and computation right okay so spark supports multi languages multi language support can you say how many language it is going to support how many languages spark is going four. to support four languages which are the four languages python java scala r yes scala python java r language fine so why pyspark means it is a python api to use spark it is the lightning fast technology right designed for fast computation it is used for running distributed sql queries creating data pipelines ingesting data into the databases running ml algorithms data streams working with data streams working with graphs working with graphs right inter means records which are interconnected what do you mean by graph data what do you mean by graph data means data records which are interconnected data streams what do you mean by streaming data right data which keeps on incrementing yeah, okay. which keeps on generating right which keeps on generating which keeps the events which keeps on generating right? so pyspark used for these things right yes spark is an execution model which has multi language support just now i was talking about it which has got multiple languages support spark can be coded with scala language default it is default language means the spark by default built using scala language scala is the only language which is used for spark environment no other environment uses this scala language but today if you see python is mostly used for implementing this spark even java also can be used our language also can be used mostly used one these two right scala and python okay so pyspark means say python api to use spark So here, right. Spark by default written in Scala. In the initial days, mostly the Scala language is preferred, but nowadays Python is mostly preferred. Yes. Scala is the native language of Spark. Okay, need for PySpark, right? Need for PySpark. So you see PySpark in Python plus Spark means huge amount of data is getting generated. The data contains unknown corrections, hidden patterns, market trends, customer preferences. So we need to extract useful information from that raw data. So we require some efficient tools for performing these operations on this huge data. So we need to have some scalable and flexible tools. Right? So PySpark is such a kind of tool, right? Python. So Apache Software Foundation came up with a tool called PySpark. That is Python API to use Spark. So generally, most people will have, so whether to go with Python or Scala, right? So previously, Scala is mostly preferred. Nowadays, that right, Python is mostly preferred because of this ML kind of, uh, ML kind of algorithms to be implemented python has got great libraries powerful libraries right for this especially for machine learning and streaming and for graph algorithms main difference between python and scala python is dynamic type scala is static type means dynamically based upon what value you are assigning if you're assigning a list of facts if you're assigning some integer then a integer variable creates if you're assigning a string string variable gets created dynamically right 
but Python contains powerful libraries for ML and graph algorithms as compared with Python, Scala has got less libraries. Python has a huge community, thousands of modules, 89,300. Scala has excellent community, but lesser as compared with Python. Has many applications, but uh, Scala is only for Spark environment. But one advantage of Scala over Python is Python is slower, Scala is faster. Scala is almost say extension to Java language. Yes. The main features, uh, PySpark features what? In-memory computation, both storage and processing in the memory level. Lazy evolution. We see lazy evolution in Spark. Means lazy evolution means if you make an action only, it gets executed. If you are not making, it won't execute. On demand only, executing the data flow. Until then, it won't execute the data flow. If it is a data flow language, the output of one will be the input to the next. Until you execute the data flow, it won't get executed. It won't get executed automatically, right? So it's a lazy evaluated. It's not active evaluated. Active evaluated means whenever declared immediately executing. But here it's not. Whenever you perform action only, it gets executed. Persistence, one more important feature. Re reusing the results of already executed transformation. Right. So one question. Yes. Is that regarding lazy evaluation, so in case of any program execution, also the same thing, right? Suppose if you want to execute, then only you can execute. Otherwise, uh, the programs will exist as it is, and uh, whenever required, we are executing them. A small example, right? You declare a function. What is the use? It won't get executed, right? Until you make a function call. Right. If you make a function call, only it executes, right? Yeah. The same way here also. You define the data flow. When you make an action only, it takes the entire data flow executes. So in other programs, also similar case, right? Suppose in C also, if you make a function, you can call the function, then only it will get executed. Generally in Python, if you run the Python code from the first line to the last line, everything executes right. automatically, statement by statement. But functions won't execute answer. You make it here also, data flows also, right? If you've got a data flow, if you are defining a data flow, until you are making some kind of action on that, the data flow won't execute from the top. root to to the end. You need to make some kind of, so we have got many built-in actions available in this Spark actions. Mm -hmm. If you okay. perform some kind of any one action from that, then only from the root to the end it is going to get executed. You have no action, no no output. Mm -hmm. Spark has a powerful fault tolerance because this is also important that when you are running your data on different machines, when you are running your data on different machines, distributed execution, right? Parallel processing is happening. Suddenly, if any machine is down, right? Spark has got the capability of regenerating the lost data partitions. And immutability. Whatever transformations, filtering, grouping, whatever operations you are performing on your data object, you get some result. But the original one is not going to get modified. Immutability. Spark data objects, they are not going to get modified. It will be immutable. But the once you apply any filtering, grouping, or matching, you get the output. A new object is created. A new object will be created. But the, the old object is not modified. It will be as it is, immutable. No modifications, changes. The output of that object you are taking and you are performing operation, you are getting some result that is nothing but you are storing in a new object. So... On the old object, if you perform some transformation, you got a new object. Old object remains same, not modified. A new object you got with the modified result. That is immutable. Partitioning is also one of the important feature of Spark. Because of this partitioning only, you are going to achieve parallel processing, right? Because of very high speed. 
the partitions distributed across multiple systems processed parallelly, getting the results, right? Yes. So, so I was discussing some real life use cases of this spice park, right? Okay. Mostly in the commercial sector, right? For real time processing. Right, and mostly it is in financial fields and in banks, right? To retrieve the customer's profiles and analyzing the data and taking the right decisions. In healthcare also, in predictions, right? The patient's health based on the previous health records and also even predicting even after getting discharged, right? Which patient is going to face that issue. Even in entertainment industry, right? There are a lot of this... This industry is moving towards this OTT platforms, right? Online streamings. So even the popular online streaming like Netflix using Apache Spark for its real-time processing for this personalized movies and web series. So it's uh, going to process more than billions of events per day that are streamed over server side. E-commerce, right? E-commerce like Flipkart, Amazon, all this they are using Spark for advertising purpose. Even tourism industry also, right? Within this tourism industry, giving advices to millions of customers. <clears throat> so the main feature, main feature what we see here in Spark. What is the main feature we see in Spark, which you won't see in Hadoop? In memory computation, right? Yes. Okay. If you talk about the execution generations, if you talk about the execution, comparing this Spark with other technologies, right? Okay. Execution generations. One second. Try to understand this execution generations. First one, MR, MapReduce. MapReduce is an execution model, right? It's a parallel execution. It's mainly designed for parallel processing, mostly used previously. But now when Spark has introduced, it got outdated, right? Stage. Spark. We talk about this stage and spark. Stage and spark. Both follows. Both follows DAG directed as cyclic growth model. Yeah. What is the DAG means? Directed. Cyclic. Yeah. Cyclic growth. But the difference, stage doesn't follow. Stage doesn't follow. Yes. In memory computation. Memory computing. It won't follow in memory computation, right? But Spark is a in memory yeah. computing system. In memory computing system. So, so what is the advantage Spark is going to get over the edge? Spark has got very high speed. A very high speed as compared to the edge. Can you say any other in-memory computing systems in the market? Only Spark or do you have any other in-memory computing systems?
भीड़ अबोट है हाना एस ए पी हाना राइट इट इज ऑल्सो इन मेमोरी कंप्लीट हाना इन स्पार्क both follows in memory computation both follows in memory computation right but hana is not a distributed ram spark is a distributed ram So it accommodates huge volumes of data, right? Data objects. So generally, for huge okay, for huge storage. What are distributed RAM? For huge. But Hana is not. So Hana is not. Hana is not a distributed RAM, but Spark is a distributed. That is the difference we see, right? So for huge storage, right? Generally, we go for Hadoop. For fast processing, for fast processing, Spark. so both combinedly store and process huge data spark is mainly designed for First thing, not for online applications, for batch applications. For batch application, use a non-interactive applications. For iterative algorithms, iterative algorithms. Most of the ML algorithms are iterative in nature. For in interactive queries, SQL queries. for streaming map reduce and spark talk about this map reduce and spark map reduce means hadoop in hadoop map reduce execution is going to happen map reduce drawbacks what are the main drawbacks of map why you are going for spark it is not in memory computing yeah that is one but uh, what is the drawback you are going to see in map reduce with the available features only transformations cannot be reused reused transformations cannot be reused bad for iterative algorithms bad for iterative, iterative algorithms. algorithms if you heard about in previously in hadoop there is a component called mahota for this ml and iterative algorithms right? when spark has introduced it got outdated not a flexible parallel process not a flexible parallel process why it is not a pro parallel process means map reduce the name itself saying right map reduce has got mapper face reducer face it has got what mapper face and reducer face the mapper output is taken as input by the reducer the reducer provides the output means do you think both mapper and reducer executes parallelly no no right once mapper execution finished that output is given to reducer reducer takes as input and computes both can't execute parallelly but map reduce is meant for parallel processing but no parallel processing here 
So it's not a flexible parallel process. And the two, we cannot control the parallel processing. We cannot control the parallel processing in the case of this Hadoop MR, right? But in Spark, we can control the parallel processing. Yes. Slow processing, which will map reduces slow processing as compared with Spark. Spark is 100 times faster, 100 times faster than MR. Map reduce. So if you talk, there was a previously there was a component called Apache Pig. The people in a, a few mostly used previously, right? Spark and Pig. Yeah. There is a copy component called Pig. It is a Pig, Pig Latin, Latin language. language. Pig Latin language we used to say. The simple scripting language, even that it. 100 lines of Java code, you can write within five to six lines in Pig Latin. That was the simplicity of this Pig Latin language. When that Pig Latin language was introduced, right, most it was a great hype for the developers, right, for this big data developers, where very less coding, huge complex tasks we can implement, right, with this one. But uh, why it got outdated? Because, because of Spark only. Both are both are data flow languages only. Both are data flow, which one Spark and Pick, both are data flow languages. Just now I discussed MapReduce drawbacks, right? But in Pick, uh, internally, what execution happens? Internally in Apache Pig, uh, okay, you are writing five lines code or very less code, right? But internally, the code is converted into Map reduce. Yes. But in pig, the entire data flow, the entire data flow is again, entire data flow is again converted to one map reduce job. The entire data flow is again converted into, it's again converted into one MR job. But MR is bad, right? Just now I said MR is bad. It has got some drawbacks. Okay. Spig is following data flow language, but internally, internally it is converted into MapReduce shop. I'm saying MapReduce has got drawbacks. That the same drawbacks that will be used, that is reflected to Pig also, right? Yes. There is a, if you heard about uh, one more product of Apache, Spark and Flink. Spark and Flink. You have you heard about this uh, Flink? Both are Apache products. So if you talk about uh, like 2016-17, uh, right? People who got updated with Spark immediately, immediately, right? Apache introduced to Flink. Immediately Apache introduced Flink. People who already updated with Spark who are working on Spark, immediately there was a talk, right? Flink is dominating Spark and Spark will be away from the market. Flink. Yes, it was true. Both are Apache products. Both are Apache products. Both purpose and objective is same. Both purpose and objective is same, right? In the earlier versions, in the earlier versions of Spark, in the earlier versions of Spark, right? It was weaker in terms of, it was weaker in analytics 
it was weaker in analytics. But before uh, Spark one point six, before Spark one point six version. Before Spark 1.6, Blink dominated Spark. Means the Spark 1.6 version was little weaker. The libraries, whatever Spark has got, right? It was not that much better. But from Spark 1.6, but from Spark 1.6 version, it has got some libraries which made Spark almost, almost equal to Link. But from Spark 2 version onwards, but from Spark 2 version onwards, Spark has got Spark has got powerful libraries. Powerful libraries, right? For ML and graphs. And the Spark dominated Flink. That's why you're not able to hear more on that Flink, right? The word Flink. They dominated initially, but it was slowly with the coming version to version, it keep on introducing powerful libraries for especially for streaming, machine learning, and glow algorithms. So it totally dominated Flink, right? So I'll try to say from this discussion what we had, the differences with this <clears throat> Spark features, Spark features and advantages, hmm. Spark features and advantages, right? Mainly, first thing, as compared with the Sage, as compared with Sage, what is that advantage it has got? In memory computation. In memory computation. As compared to Hana, distributed crossing, distributed execution. As compared with the MR, flexible Excellent. parallel process and a high speed. High speed we see right in. And transformations can be reused. Transformations can be reused in Spark. Mm. Still good for iterative algorithms. Good for iterative algorithms. And multi language support. Multi language support and as compared with Flink, as compared with supports advanced analytics, okay. So, these are Spark features and advantages, right? Spark features and a comparison with Flink, comparison with MapReduce. Comparison with Flink, comparison with Sage, comparison with Hana, right? How it is useful and defining Spark, so distributed execution, distributed execution, cluster computing framework, parallel process in memory computation, used for large scale data processing. So you need to understand clearly about the Spark data objects 
Spark data objects, right. My more discussion will be towards this data frames, right? Spark data frames. So here we have got the concept of RDD. RDD, right? Yes. What is it? That resilient, resilient, distributed data sets. You need to clearly understand this, right? For understanding Spark, resilient to distributed data sets. See, generally, if you have knowledge on Hadoop, Hadoop data objects, Hadoop data objects are what? Files. Data stored in the form of files. Spark data objects. Data. Spark data objects. RTDs. Data RTD. frames. Spark data objects, RTDs. Data frames. These streams. RTDs, data frames. See, if you talk uh, RTD is again, is again subdivided, subdivided into partitions into partitions these partitions these partitions are distributed these partitions are distributed across multiple ramps of multiple worker nodes and are processed parallelly. Well, so, okay, these partitions are distributed across multiple ramps of multiple worker nodes and are processed parallelly. See, RTD programming style. Is a data flow. What is data flow? Data flow is a sequence collection of files. Sequence collection of files. Sequence collection of pipes means RTD. A pipe means any data operation, any data operation such as loading a data. Transforming data, filtering data, grouping data, merging data, etc. One more thing you need to understand in Spark. In Spark, data flow is executed. Data flow is executed sequentially. That is RTD by RTD. 
one after the another <clears throat> one after the another in dag style directed in dag style with in memory computation feature with in memory in memory computing feature and a persistence feature in spark data flow is executed sequentially that is rtd by rtd one after the another in dag style with in memory computing feature and persistence feature so you may ask here when it is executing sequentially where we are going to see the parallel processing right so here two rtds cannot execute parallel why two rtds cannot execute parallel why anyone one rtd output is taken as uh, input for the second time. yeah one rtd the rtd of one will be taken as the output to the next because output of one rtd is taken as input to two other understood spark data objects are called rtds rtds are subdivided into partitions these partitions are distributed across multiple ramps of multiple worker nodes and are processed parallelly the programming style is data flow data flow means sequence collection of pipes type is any data operation in spark data flow executed sequentially right for example rtd1 rtd1 has got p1 p2 p3 understand here p3 p4 p5 nagaraj bin mit p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 right p6 p7 p8 p9 p10 into 10 partitions into 10 partitions these 10 partitions these 10 partitions can execute parallelly these 10 partitions can execute parallelly has got 20 partitions or 30 partitions rtd1 output taken as input to rtd2 rtd1 output is taken as input to rtd that's why if rtd1 and rtd2 both are executing parallelly cannot execute because rtd2 to get this input right first rtd1 has to be computed totally then only that output can be taken as input by rtd2 from where this rtd2 got generated from from where this rtd2, RTD2 got generated from rtd1 right? very simple right rtd1 rtd1 dot transformation whatever transformation right an rtd1 if you are performing a, a transformation the result is also rtd rtd2 
the original RTD one remains same. It's immutable. On RTD one, if you are performing transformation, you are getting RTD two data objects. Uh, is it how many partition can we create in a RTD maximum? What? I mean, how many partition can be created in an RTD maximum? Okay. How many systems you have got? Those many partitions you can create. Okay. For example, 10 partitions here, 10 systems you have got. I doesn't have 10 systems. So I have only five systems. In such case, I two partitions in one system. If 10 partitions created only five systems, then very simple. The partitions will be distributed across that five systems. In system one, two partitions, system two, two partitions, system three, two partitions, system five, two partitions. 10, part, ten partitions were distributed across these five systems. If only one system, all the 10 partitions stored in a single system, no parallel processing, you will see. 10 systems, 10 systems par working parallelly, running parallelly of a single data object with 10 partitions executing parallelly. I was saying, right, on an RTD, on an RTD, we can perform transformations and actions. So on an RTD, just observe here, on an RTD, And an RTD, two operations, two operations can be performed. Mainly two operations can be performed. What are they? First one, transformations, second actions. Many inbuilt transformations available, inbuilt actions available. Right? Transformations, actions. Transformations, if I talk about these transformations. Transformations mainly are of three types. They are mainly of three types, three types of transformations. First one, each element of transformation, each element, uh, each element of transformation. Each element transformation means Every we, use, we, we use functions like uh, we use functions like map function. A, a small logic, business logic, you are mapping with each and every record. Or flat map. Map or flat map. RDD dot map you say. RTD dot flat map you see. Flat map, M capital here. M capital. What do you mean by each element transformation? What do you mean by each element transformation? Transforming each element. Transforming each element in a transforming each element. So, what is each element transformation means? Very simple. All the employee names transforming each employee name in such a way that the first character. Up. 
first character in the upper case. And all the remaining, and all the remaining in lower case. In lower case. If you have got a hundred so, one lakh employees, all the one lakh employees, the first character has to be in upper case. That is one. For example, each element transformations, each element transformations means okay. Adding five thousand as bonus to the salaries of each employee each employee adding 5000 as bonus to the salaries of each employee so how will you do this rtd dot map function we use Salary plus RTD dot to map salary salary gives salary is supposed to salary plus salary five thousand. Plus 5, In this way, it means five thousand added to each and every. That's why we call each element a transformation. Five thousand added to each and every employee. Second transformation. Second transformation is what filter transformation. Filter transformation. Filter transformation, right? Filtering based on condition. Salary greater than filtering the data based on filtering the data based on condition. Filtering data based on condition. For example, the function what we use here, filter only. Previously, we use map and flat map. Here, we use filter only. For example, you want to filter RTD dot filter. RTD dot filter, right. City equal to Hyderabad. Filter. RTD dot filter. Department name equal to sales department. I want to filter only the department number sales records only. Next, one more transformation aggregated transformation. Aggregated transformation, right? Aggregated transformation, we have what functions like the grouping, group by key, and also like reduce by key. Group by key, reduce by key. For groupings, for groupings and aggregations. On an RTD,
on an RTD, if you apply any of the above transformation, the resultant is also a RTD. Up to now, transformations on an RTD gives transformations from the, sorry, RTD only. Second thing is actions. I was saying that in, in Spark, we have got inbuilt, inbuilt actions and transformations, inbuilt transactions, actions, transformations and actions, right? Just now I given some of those, the categories I said, but I didn't discuss any of this. Map is one transformation, flat map, filter, group by key, reduce by key. In this way, many inbuilt transformations. Spark is providing many inbuilt transformations. In the same way, many inbuilt actions are there. What is the advantage of actions? What is the advantage of actions means? You want to execute the data flow, action has to be performed compulsory. So two things we can perform an RTD. Actions. When an action is performed, when an action is performed on a RTD, on a RTD, then only the entire data flow When action is performed in RTD, then only entire data flow will be executed from its root RTD. The following are some of the actions. Inbuilt actions, the following are some of the inbuilt actions. Collect. First one we say collect. It collects all the partitions. It collects all the partitions data of different worker nodes. It collects all the partition data of different worker nodes into client. Just to say rtd.collect, that's it. Second, count. Count, right? Counts the number of elements. Counts the number of elements in RTD. For example, RTD dot count. Take. Retrieves the first n number of elements of a RD. Take means yes. RD dot take of 10. RDD, right? RDD dot take of 10.
storing the results of a computed OTD. into HDFS. Storing the results of a computed RTD into HDFS, if it is. rdd dot save as text file the path of the file note this is important this note is important right on a rtd if we apply if we apply any transformation On an RTD, if we apply any transformation, the resultant the resultant also is a RTD. On an RTD, if we apply any transformation, the resultant also is a RTD means spark object. On RTD, if we apply any action on an RTD, if we apply any action, the resultant is not a RTD. It is local object. The resultant is not an already, it is a local object. Local object means if you are using Python language, Python object or a scale object. Okay, understand these things, right? Yes. RTD, if we apply any transformation, the resultant is also a RTD. On an RTD, if we apply any action, the resultant is not an RTD, it's a local object. A small example I take. RTD1, the output of RTD1 as input to RTD2, the output of RTD2 input to RTD3, All the four RTDs will it be loaded into ramps simultaneously? All these four RTDs will be loaded into ramps simultaneously. This is the data flow. This is your data flow. This data flow won't execute automatically. If a performing RTD4 dot action, 
from RTD1 to RTD4, it executes. So what output, whatever you get will be collected. If I say on RTD3, if you say action, from RTD1 to RTD3, it will compute and gives that output of the RTD3. Okay. So all the four RTDs won't be loaded into RAM simultaneously. First RTD and it's all partitions will be loaded, computes the output taken by RTD2. When RTD2 is loaded, computed, when it's computation finished, all this RTD1 and its partitions will be removed from the RAM. Because these many RTDs, it cannot accommodate in the RAM, not in the disk. So RTD by RTD, they get loaded. The output once cut. When RTD3 is ready, when RTD2, the output of RTD2 taken by RTD3, once this RTD3 computed, execution finished, RTD2 also gets removed from the RAM. Means the RTD3 and its partitions, everything gets loaded into the RAM. The once that RTD3 is computed, the output is collected. When this is ready, this gets removed. When this final output also collects, final output also collected, and this RTD also down. How many RTDs in the RAM? How many RTDs in the RAM now after execution of this entire data flow? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Empty? Yes, no RTDs in the RAM. We can figure out the next two flow. There are also one by one RTDs gets loaded, executes, right? Yes. Okay, fine. So I've got a lot of discussion. You all need to understand a lot of things how this RTD is computed, persistence options, fault tolerance model. So this is on an RTD, if you apply any action, the result is a local object. Action means, for example, RTD dot count, RTD dot count, you will get what is the result? RTD dot count, you will be getting Python object, Python variable, count like five or six or seven, right? These are integers, right? Python objects you get. For example, how this RTD one is created. I'm I'll be discussing that different ways of creating RTDs. First, how this first RTD is created, how this Spark data object is created using the Spark context by using this text file, yes, the path of the file. When we load, when we load a file by using Spark context, the first RTD is created. <clears throat> on this RTD one, on this RTD, just now I discussed some of this. Transformation set, what are the different transformations? Map, flat map, filter. Second one, filter. Starts with, ends with, group, reduce, right? Yes, reduce by key. On a RTD one, if I perform some map transformation, you're mapping, okay, you're adding some salaries to each and every employee. 
something, some map operation is performed. Hello, Vijay. Yeah, now are you able to hear my voice? Some error has occurred in the connection. Right. <clears throat> yeah, we can hear. Understood, right? So mainly RTD means RTD is a Spark data object. It's divided, subdivided into partitions. They are distributed across multiple RAMs of multiple worker nodes because of that very parallel processing we can see in memory computation. It's programming style is data flow, sequence collection of pipe. The output of one will be the input to the next one. RTDs, two RTDs can never execute parallelly. The RTDs partitions are going to get executed parallelly. The output will be collected by the next one. On RTD, two operations, transformations, actions. Transformations, mainly three types. Each element transformation, filter transformation, and aggregated transformations. Any transformations you apply on this RTD, so the result is also an RTD. Actions, if you apply, you will get Python objects. Collect, count, take, save as text file, right? Yes. So, yes. Understood, everyone? Any queries in this? Yeah. <clears throat> 
So one second. So this is what I'll be discussing, right? Once I have a look on this. So what is Apache Spark, PySpark, uh, PySpark, Spark session, context, paralyzing, repartition, PySpark, RTD computations, right? Operations on RTD, action, different inbuilt actions and transformations, steps in RTD and persistence options, different persistence options, PySpark core computation, fault tolerance model, different ways of creating RTDs, increasing the number of partitions, grouping, segregation, reduce by key, group by key, various built-in functions of this PySpark, various, various actions, what are the other actions, inbuilt actions and transformations, like count by key, count by value, sort by key, union, distinct, joins, inner, right? PySpark SQL data frames. What are the, yes, using multiple expressions, single expressions, right? And uh, PySpark creating data frame, empty data frame, data frame to pandas, structure types, fact field, column class, row class, select, collect with column, column renamed, where, drop, drop duplicates, group by union, union all. Yes, for each fill null, fills, pivot, partition by array type, right? All this. PySpark SQL functions, aggregate functions, window functions, date and timestamp functions, JSON functions. And here, when PySpark built in functions, EXPR, split, concat, translate, overlay, two stamps, date and time related, right? Timestamps related, map keys. So we, are, we don't need to write huge codings here. We have got inbuilt functionalities available, right? For performing these operations. PySpark external sources, working with SQL statements, hive integration, working with CSV, JSON transformations, narrow and wide transformations, adding rows, dropping of columns, renaming columns, handling nulls, deployment modes, local mode, cluster mode, SPySpark stays and tasks, drivers and executor, building Spark applications, deploying Spark applications to the cluster and tuning, performance tuning mechanism, right? And PySpark streaming concept and integration with Kafka, and PySpark MLlib library, right? Yes. So this is what I'll be discussing, right? Yes. So tomorrow, just I'll be showing you some flows, data flows, right? Just I'll spark data flows and also more on this computation and this persistence options. The one of the important feature of Spark, persistence, right? So one thing is Spark is a very high speed processing technology. There is PySpark, 100 times faster than the disk processing systems a very high rate of speed you can just process the data the two huge data right and the main features you got right parallel processing distributed execution in memory computations right yes <clears throat> yeah <clears throat> any queries you got anyone right uh yes sir uh is it going to be a more of practical class where we will you know where we will uh, connect through multiple systems and uh, one second one second so first uh, some three four sessions uh, you need to understand about the spark architecture spark computation the persistence fault tolerance model some three to four sessions right later there won't be any theory at all from the next uh, means after that coming session week onwards right there won't be any theory everything practical will be no, discussed. yes sir We'll be discussing that, uh, about. Uh, we'll be discussing that, about the one by one. Uh, that is uh, practically the various actions, various transformations, data frames. There are many data frame uh, built-in functionalities given by the Spark for performing the operations, and with many working examples. In that case, once you understand this Spark architecture, later everything will be practical. I'll be showing you on different environments how to run this Spark. Right. This is Spark with. And also, I'll show you how to run within this uh, Anaconda distributions, Jupyter Notebook, in PyCharm ID, and in different other Databricks, right? Okay, sir. Sure. Thank you. That's what I wanted. Thank you so much. Okay. Fine. So, so, only thing is, you need to understand how the RTD in uh, Spark data objects, how they are computed, what are the actions, transformations, what we are going to apply, what output we are going Means here, whenever you are applying something, right? What output you are going to get also, you need to get. 
we are applying any functionality on this data object class, what output you are going to get, Where whether you are getting Spark object or Python object. You need to clearly understand. If you are if you are getting the output as a Spark object, again, you can apply Spark functionality on that. Again, you got Spark function. Again, you can apply Spark functionality until you get the desired result. But if you have got a Python object, the result is a Python object. Again, there is a concept, right? Paralyzing. How to convert a Python object to Spark object again? Paralyzing. You need to paralyze it. Make it into Spark object. Again, Spark functionalities. Many functionalities provided by Spark, right? So that is what we will discuss about all that functionalities of Spark. Actions, transformations, inbuilt actions and transformations, right? Someone was asking a query, right? Yeah, how many sessions completed? Last, last week, just we had introductory session. This was the time. I was just uh, saying right, defining Spark in today's session. Oh, that one also we can upload right in the in that uh, recording session. So one second. Okay, check your with whatever mail ID right with whatever mail ID you have joined this session today. You can check that mail ID right tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. We already yes. shared the link. You got it right. Actually, okay. today I have this is the first class only, that's why I'm asking. Today itself, right? I was just defining what is Spark, what is what is by Spark, what are the Spark features compared with other technologies, everything I discussed. So how Spark is compared with other technologies, Spark by Spark features, what are the real life use cases compared with other technologies, and uh what is a Spark data objects? Everything is covered in today's session. Last week, we have completed two sessions, right? So yes, the so whatever that videos, right? Can you see in the chart panel, everyone? Did the online team, did the online team yeah, provide can, that yeah, course, course content and the videos, right? Yeah. I can see yes, yes, sir. Course, co course content in the videos, so video link is given, right? Yes, you can, check, you can check in that that link. You can check, right? The course content is given, and also can you see that video link? Uh, course content, the video link is given, everyone. And, uh, but I, I didn't receive that uh, uh, course content uh, videos link in the Zoom chat. Are you able to see? Everyone able to see? Hello? Yes, I got the Google Drive location. So if you open your Google Drive, there, uh, I got an uh, email. So other, otherwise, okay, not a problem. Again, with whatever mail ID, with whatever mail ID, right, you have joined this meeting. Everyone, you will be getting a course content link and also the video link where you can watch today's video and the previous video, right? You can check in that. You will get a okay. mail separately, right? With whatever everyone who has joined this meeting, with whatever mail ID to that mail ID, you will be getting one second, right? So fine. One, oh, one more query we have. Uh, and uh, by using a uh, PySpar, we can convert the nested JSON into CSV file. Yes, it means nested JSON first will convert into data frame from the data frame to CSV can be. Okay. 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 Anything you can convert to data frame first from a JSV and from a CSV, all this from database table, right? You can create a data frame. from the data frame again to a CSV or JSV, anything you can create. About I'm talking about Spark. Even Panda is available, even in uh, here in uh, Spark also it is available the data frames, right? You can convert it. Nested JSONs. By using Python also, we can convert. In Python also, we have got that Pandas module is there, right? There also you can do it. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, Vijay, one more thing there. I mean, have you created the WhatsApp group for this Python? No, no, not yet created. Once created, it, it will be posted, right? Fine. Okay, okay. Okay, fine. So we'll continue tomorrow, same time, right? Same time at 5 o'clock. More discussion on this, right? Tomorrow, I'll be just going you some example data flows of this. Spark, I'll take some different data flows. And also there is a concept like persistence, means already executed transformation, how can I reuse it in Spark? There is one more feature is there that I'll be discussing. 
and some data flows, examples of some data flows, right? Before I go with that actual part, right? Fine. So I'll stop for now. We'll continue tomorrow. Same link you can follow tomorrow. Same time tomorrow, five o'clock, right? More discussion of this one. Yes. <clears throat> Fine. Thank you all. Fine. We'll meet tomorrow.